Vani and company is about to begin. Just four days till we head to the vote. Uh, we got some real tight races. Lanny Davis, Democrat strategist and author of Crisis Tales, joins us now. Lanny, it's been too long. Welcome back. I don't think you've ever been on Varney and Company before. It's a real pleasure to have you with us, sir. Well, uh, say hello to Elizabeth McDonald, who's about the only journalist that ever wrote a nice article about me. So, <laughs> <laughs> Well, you're on this well, show. Hi, We're going to treat you real hi, well, Elizabeth. that's a promise. <laughs> now, you say that Democrats are not going to lose control of the Senate. I want you to make your case, without going into individual races, because, you know, we don't have a lot of time, but overall, why will they retain control? Well, I think I hedged my bets in the article that I wrote saying this is my most optimistic prediction is 50-50 with Biden uh, breaking the tie. So that's uh, giving me a little bit of a hedge that I'm probably going to be wrong the way the trend lines are looking. But the way I predicted that is if we pick up seats in Kansas and in, um, I, I believe the best chance that we have is, is Kansas. And we might actually pick up uh, Kentucky. Uh, who knows? Uh, those two pickups would be the only way we get to 50 50. Now, you say we, uh, you're referring to the Democrats. You are a Democrat. I'm a Democrat. You're, you're yes, sir. I, mean, I got it. But I think you, you're far more to the center of the party, and I would characterize President Obama as more to the left of the party. I think you're more comfortable in the middle, aren't you? Well, on issues I'm pretty left. I support Obamacare. I'm pro-choice in all the gay marriage and all the issues you'd identify as liberal versus conservative. But I believe in the free market and I believe in a balanced budget. I think those are liberal positions. But I call myself a Clintonian Democrat because liberals ought to be reaching across the aisle and finding common ground with free market conservatives. And that's why some people call me uh, centrist, I guess, which is the awful word on the base, in the base of our parties. Yes. It's a <laughs> terrible word. It's almost as bad as moderate, isn't it? A centrist. <laughs> <That's exactly. Lord. laughs> uh, are you a big supporter of uh, Hillary Clinton? I think you are. I am, and I find it very uh, ironic that the left of the party uh, says she's not progressive. I always say, tell me an issue that she's not progressive, but she does believe in free enterprise, she does believe in the marketplace, and she does believe in balanced budgets like her husband. So on economics, uh, I think there is a new uh, progressivism which believes that leaving debt to our children is not liberal. Do, do you think you've got to pull the party back to where you are? Because I, I th I'm reading between the lines. I'm listening very carefully to what you say. And I, yeah. I, I think you would agree that the party has been moved a bit too far to the left for your liking and for Ms. Clinton's liking. And your job in the next two years is to pull them back into the dread center. That's what you've got to do. Well, honestly, I consider myself a liberal Democrat. I use the word liberal, FDR. It was my hero for my dad's teaching. But the style and partisanship problems of the administration and the Republican and Democratic polarization in Congress is where I'm different, where I believe that Hillary Clinton is different. Uh, one of her best friends in the U.S. Senate, uh, John McCain, has said to me that Hillary Clinton was a workhorse, not a show horse, and she knew how to make deals. And what the country is crying for are Democrats and Republicans who stand on principles but look for common ground. Mm -hmm. That's where the center is. That's where I think I am and where uh, Mrs. Clinton is going to have to take the Democrats. Yeah, I wonder if you and I have common ground, because here's where my real big beef is with the left. I don't like paying more than half of my income in income tax to the state and federal governments. And at the moment, I do pretty well, and I pay more than half, and I think that's flat out wrong. Would you make common ground with me and say that it is flat out wrong to take more than half of any man's income, regardless of what he makes? Would you agree with me on that? I, no, I would agree with the first half of what you say. I pay more than one half of every dollar, and I hate it. But I don't think it's wrong because our social contract since Franklin Roosevelt is that we fund programs to give people economic opportunities. And that started with Social Security and the minimum wage and lots of other things that the government needs to regulate. But those in programs the are not sector. working. So I do agree that the federal government is not working and it's inefficient and we need market place forces to make it more efficient. That's where I sound like you, Stuart. But I don't mind paying taxes if those taxes were put to work efficiently to help people with uh, the bottom of the ladder to have greater economic opportunity. But 
That's where I am. Uh, I wouldn't mind that either, but I don't ever expect to see that see? day come. Lanny Davis, now that was a pleasure. If you're not careful, Thank you, we'll invite you back. <laughs> please, please invite me back. Thank you. Crisis Tales, Lanny Davis, everyone. He'll be back. Thank you, sir.